guys, me Anya here. Today I want to give a little health update. So if you saw my last health update, then I was getting ready to go see a doctor. Uh, so today I'm going to give you the results of uh, the results. Well, I'm just going to tell you how it went. And also I want to talk about palliative care basically I have appointment scheduled with to see my oncologist but sometimes instead of seeing my oncologist a nurse practitioner uh, steps into the office overall uh, she is like 90% uh, like the oncologist however if you you want to discuss certain things then you kind of can't. Um, for example, last time I had a couple questions that were very specific and I wanted to have answers to them and the nurse practitioner said, well, I'm going to write them down, I'm going to ask them from the oncologist, but I haven't heard anything back. So basically it means that next time I'm seeing oncologist, I'm going to have to raise the same questions. Like, for example, one question I had was that why am I not uh, on a chemically induced menopause? Because uh, the cancer I have uh, uses um, my female hormones, estrogen and progesterone, actually mostly estrogen, uh, not so much progesterone, uh, but some of it too, uh, to grow. And I used to be on chemically induced menopause but about two years ago, uh, when I started having all of those horrible pains, I became very, very depressed and anx anxious. And so uh, at the time, my oncologist just thought that, okay, let's just try to take you off from that medication that caused uh, me to be in a menopause and see if you're going to feel better. And I did somewhat feel better however well, the reality is that uh, I think that that itself was also, also causing me side effects and pains but the reality is that I had so much pains and the real reason why I was feeling very uncomfortable was not that medication it's actually called Lupron that I was on wasn't because of the lupron but because of the all the pains that I was going through because uh, I had cancer pain but at the time because I was not diagnosed yet I had no real uh, painkillers to fight that pain so of course I was anxious and um, depressed severely so I feel like it's time to reevaluate the situation it's just that um, Right, so for some reason I feel extremely sleepy. Um, like I'm having trouble actually staying awake.
I don't have narcolepsy. The problem is that last night I was extremely tired, um, but I was like overtired. I was worried that I might not be able to sleep at all, and so I ended up taking uh, Ativan. The problem with Ativan is that it it does make me sleepy, I was able to fall asleep uh, and sleep through the night but it does stay in my system the next day and causes me to be sleepy it's extremely annoying so, <coughs> right so yeah, so uh, so basically I have to now talk about the same issues that I did mention to the nurse, nurse practitioner again uh, uh, to my oncologist yet I get um, I have to pay the same amount the insurance is uh, as the same amount of money I didn't pay the same amount of copay by the way my copay is seventy dollars so every time I see a specialist I have to pay seventy dollars which is a lot of money I'm lucky enough to have health insurance though, so without health insurance I would die because they wouldn't even see you. Uh, that's America for you. Uh, but overall the nurse practitioner is very uh, knowledgeable, uh, she orders things, she takes care of everything and uh, so yeah, so last, uh, so last time, the first thing, of course, when the nurse practitioner came in, we started talking about was my platelets. And of course, we high-fived because my uh, platelets were high enough that I was able to get chemo. Unfortunately, my red blood count, cell count was down and I needed blood. So uh, basically, I ended up having to give, um, so basically, I ended up getting a lot of treatment. So after seeing the nurse practitioner, I headed down. So the um, the first level, the infusion center is located in this hospital. I headed down to the infusion center and I got uh, five different treatments. I got um, I got medication. So basically, in Alasta. Uh, to boost my white, white cards, blood cells, I got blood transfusion to boost my red blood cells. Uh, then I got uh, Xchiva to uh, basically protect my bones. Uh, so that's three. I did get chemo, and that's four. And I, uh, I also got pro. Uh, I also got uh, EPO to uh, boost, uh, help boost my red blood cells to kind of force my my uh, bone marrow to produce red blood cell count, red blood cells. Yes. So I entered the hospital last Wednesday around 11 o'clock. And when everything was done, it was close to 7.30. So it was like a full work day in the hospital just to get treated. Uh, yes, and then uh, my hubby came, uh, picked me up and took me to the parking lot because I, uh, where I had left my car. So uh, I drove my car home. Uh, by the way, there is a Good, very good news about my car. So my insurance, actually, car insurance. We finally call, uh, call there, and and they said that they're going to go after this uh, person who did not have insurance, and uh, they gave us um, a big check already. They came and checked everything, uh, and gave us a check to repair the car. So everything is going to be fine. I mean, I kind of thought that it's not going anywhere, but luckily uh, it's actually, even though the accident happened in May, it finally uh, <laughs> got resolved. Uh, oh, man. So, uh, I also wanted to talk about my palliative care. So, the very first time when I went to palliative care, I had a very bad experience for various reasons, if you go back. 
in my videos I might be I think I talked about it um, so I don't want to go over it again but this time um, the palate you care is uh, going much better so I had appointment with the doctors there was nobody else it's just the doctor and uh, she was very kind understanding I I liked the doctor even the very first time I went even the very first time when I didn't like uh, the palliative care situation I did like the doctor and so that's how I wanted things to be that I just wanted to see the doctor and uh, so she has put me now uh, to so basically she increased uh, the dose of um, fentanyl so I'm actually on 100 micrograms of fentanyl and I'm taking right I think I mentioned it somewhere that I'm taking uh, short morphine short acting morphine also for breakthrough pain but honestly I have almost no breakthrough pain now uh, thanks to the fentanyl uh, another thing is that uh, I ordered and uh, I don't know if that's ordered so basically I signed up to be able to uh, buy cannabis oil and once I get it I will let you know so first of all cannabis oil is not to cure the cancer okay so no don't give me any kind of crap about that uh, cannabis oil uh, is only to help you deal with symptoms the the DA a, so basically the acting the act, uh, active ingredients in the oil are, are very very like this very small amount but apparently people still are able to feel it so um, hopefully like the idea is that hopefully it will help you basically help you eat better um, help you uh, uh, sleep better and also might reduce pain well we see how this stuff goes uh, so how far is are the things so uh, I ordered the ca a card and now I'm supposed to go pick it up in some random government building which I haven't done yet it will cost $25 and then I can order it online which is going to be like $90 I think is the little bottle and it lasts depending on the person from one to three months so that's uh, that so um, a little update on Posso. Posso did something very, 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 very bad. I'm very, very upset with Posso. So uh, I don't know what the heck she was thinking. So um, she actually went to the bathroom and she put uh, in the bathroom next to the toilet. So I think that uh, she knows that that's where the poo goes but she doesn't understand that she's a pig and she's not supposed to do it there. Uh, I don't really understand. Uh, so she is capable of holding and going to outside. She goes outside several, several day, times a day, basically. I just like, like I let her out and then I, soon after I get her back inside just because of the heat and um, so she has plenty of opportunities uh, to use the restroom but the thing is what might have happened is that uh, so my hubby was away for a week uh, I have been so my hubby came back yesterday so he, he was away in Mexico uh, in a conference for a week and unfortunately I was not able to go uh, because when we were doing those arrangements I was very very weak and we thought that I'm just not going to manage it and so I just didn't go even though on hindsight but you know I don't want to talk about like yeah on a hindsight I feel like I might have able to be okay but you know you know we didn't know that I'm going to be okay that I'm going to get blood the day before you know the 
the actual uh, uh, flight to Mexico happens. So yeah. So what I wanted to say is that uh, Bosu's schedule was off, and so maybe she. Uh, so maybe this was off. I don't know. I'm. I'm. I'm shocked. I'm unhappy. Uh, I washed and cleaned and cleaned and washed the bathroom uh, earlier, and I feel like I need to do it again. Uh, yeah. So it's it's not good. Uh, I don't know. I get this. I I feel really very sleepy. I think what we need to do is the best thing to do here is to go for a walk. But I don't know if I, I have it in me. I feel like I'm going to go and fall asleep. I can't even keep my eyes open. Oh my gosh! Well, thank you for watching my uh, my video. So this video was a little bit uh, shorter. Also, uh, it's going to be. Um, so the yesterday, I wanted to actually do this video yesterday, but um, my hobby was coming home yesterday, and so I was cleaning up, and I wanted uh, some things to just look good for him when he comes home. Okay, and I need to go and lie down. Okay, thank you. Bye.